Hello everyone and welcome back to Hampton, New Brunswick as we continue our coverage of the 2013 Maritime Northern uh, Junior C Hockey Championships and, and I'm with Anthony Walker who's uh, sitting to my right side who is sole responsibility is to keep me entertained and provide some music as well and he does a good job as well listen uh, Walker we were at the award ceremony banquet uh, just a couple of hours ago and um, let's introduce our um, our listeners to uh, the award winners Uh, Tyler to Tweeney, absolutely, yeah. You're much better at pronouncing it than I am. And what kind of um, offensive production has he provided for the Cox after the round robin here? Well, you know, in the, in the four games that they've played, um, one in which they were shut out, so really he's only produced points in three games, uh, he was able to put together an impressive uh, two goals and seven assists. Now, two goals and seven assists for uh, Tyler to Twenty representing the Canucks. Congratulations, as uh, you are one of the top forwards after the round robin. Now, top forward number two would go to. Well, we're actually going to uh, introduce his lineman, number 19, Wendell Kalujic. Yeah, Kalujic is right, absolutely. Uh, Wendell Kalujic, and what kind of offensive numbers has he provided? Yeah, in four games, again, uh, with one, one of their games being a shadow, his team, he was able to produce three goals and four assists. So more assists than goals for Wendell Kalujic? Yep. That's impressive stuff right there. And Kalujic last year was the number one player in last year's tournament. Had more goals than anyone else. So to see him with more assists than goals is, uh, you know, that's another part of his game. So it's good to see for the Canucks as well. And finally, the third forward. We're going to go with uh, a forward from the Chester Clippers. And, and he's, a, I guess you call him a local favorite, maybe having played with the St. John Sea Dogs. With number 91, Kyle DeLosa. Kyle DeLosa, an explosive player as well, and the offensive numbers he provided thus far. Yeah, you know, Kyle uh, has been very offensive, and uh, for the most part, probably one of the more dominant players on the ice. He was able to produce in the four games, and he played a total of six goals and one assist. Seven points. Kyle DeLosa, uh, congratulations in relation to the Chester Clippers, a fine squad from Nova Scotia. Now, finally, the defensive pairing, and the award winners are... Well, there's two award winners for the defensive pairings. Um, and picking the defense was a little more than just looking at the standing sometimes because, uh, as most of your listeners would know, being a good defenseman and standing out uh, sometimes doesn't always show up in the score sheet. So uh, the two uh, the two players that we picked was number from the Chester Clippers, number 19, who I believe is our captain. Um, and it's, it's I can't even pronounce his first name. Number 19, the captain and the pride of the Chester Clippers, uh, the quarterback, so to speak, on the power play unit as Matthew Bourgeois. Right, when he had a total of three assists, but his vision out there on the ice, uh, being able to quarterback the power play, uh, and even on a five and five, he reads the play so well. He does, yeah. That, uh, you know, he is, you know, without him, this team would probably not have the offensive production that they have. He's the glue, no question about that. And defenseman number two to complete it. Well, and we picked uh, one of the defensemen who I've had the opportunity to see most of the year. Hampton, uh, playing with the local club here at the Hampton Hurricanes. Um, a good KV boy from the KV Crusaders, number five, Matt Bennett. And he played high school hockey last year. Matt Bennett played high school hockey. The, the Hampton Hurricanes, uh, we have the opportunity to pick from a number of the stronger of the high school programs around here. And I think this year we're carrying five players from the uh, from the team next last year. Uh, two from KV and uh, I think there's three of them from Hampton on, from last year. So again, not showing up in the score sheet. He only had one assist, but right now um, Matt, uh, Matt, to me, having watched him play most of the year and again in this tournament, he's so calm and cool and collective out there that uh, his his skill is representative on, on the, I, if we kept track of the plus minus, I'm guessing he would not be on the ice for too many goals against. And also Matt Bennett should allude to that the Hampton Hurricanes are, are enjoying his services. He plays on the top uh, defensive unit for the Hampton Hurricanes. More on him uh, later on in the broadcast. And of course, you need goaltending. And uh, the top goaltender, listen, the stats back it up, and the winner of the top goaltender after round robin play. We, uh, well, the stats did back it up, and it was number 31 for the Hampton Hurricanes, Mr. Matt Ingram. Uh, Matt, you know, having played four games, Matt uh, started two of them, won both, uh, had one shutout, and then allowed uh, one goal against the other one for a total goals against average of 0.5. 
Um, and they, the shutout being the impressive because I think he shut out the uh, Yellow Canucks, who are probably the top point producing team in the in the tournament. So that was more impressive in itself. And Ingram as well is 2-0 with a .5 goals against. That is tough to beat, including a shutout. Congratulations to everyone, but we have some more award winners. Sure, we have the uh, most sportsmanlike, which is uh, one of the trophies that's harder to pick as you watch the tournament. You have to really pay attention. And to be honest with you, it was a tough de decision. But we went with, uh, well, on the paper it says Trevor Goodet, but I think we called him, it was a Trevor Goody from uh, the Take Nish Aces. You know, in, in New Brunswick we say Godet. In uh, Prince Edward Island, it's Goody. So I stand corrected. Uh, so Travis Goody, congratulations for the most sportsmanlike award in the tournament. And now we're coming down to the tournament MVP the after tournament, round robin play. Right, and the tournament MVP is, you know, as we looked at all the point producers, whether it's uh, Deloso or Kalachuk or... Uh, you know, you look on defense, whether it's Bennett or Bourgeois. Um, one of the names that we settled on was um, the goaltender from Western Valley, number three, Patrick uh, Goudreau. Uh, I had the opportunity to see him play a number of times this year, almost probably seven times. And I can tell you that, uh, as a, it's evident in this game, he uh, he is the backbone of this team. He's been around a long time. Probably the best player, uh, or at least the best goaltender in the uh, junior C bracket throughout the province of New Brunswick this year. Well, I'll tell you what, he took an expansion team here and carried them to the playoffs and now he's at this tournament and he's on the ice right now. Is a play we're just about to get going here. Listen, thanks a lot, Mr. Walker, and uh, keep up your fine work here. Appreciate that, thanks. Good stuff. And that was the award ceremony banquet and congratulations to all the award winners and well-deserved. As the second period will just get underway in a matter of seconds. A few players for the Canucks taking their time to get out from the dressing room. And again, a 1 minute and 44 second power play for the Canucks to begin this second period. A full 20 minute period for you. 2-1 lead. The Canucks lead this hockey game. Canucks are now skating on the right side down to the left. Wearing their blue jersey and again, New Brunswick. Western Valley Panthers on the left side, skating down to the right. And what do the Canucks have up their sleeves on the power play? Joe Kopak. he's going to leave it there on the right side. Sue Senark dumps the puck in, cross corner. Off the boards, New Brunswick can't clear. Back to the line, there's a shot. Sue Senark got a piece and it just goes wide. Sue Senark lost the handle behind the net. It goes to the line as it held in a fine keep by Kopak. A second effort, and it's out towards center ice. Joe Kopak. Settles things down up ahead now, Tepana. Tepana looking around, eludes to fire the puck. Wraps around the boards, picking it up there as Taylor tried to pick it off. Couldn't do it. Goes back to the point. Kopak is going to flutter the puck in. It's centered out in front as Tatwini was right there. Couldn't connect and down the ice. Takes a funny bounce on James Merritt. Good thing he was partially out of the net. 45 seconds, all that remains on the power play. A great opportunity now for the Canucks, but they can't get the puck in deep. And on the other side, here comes Cheney on the PK. Cheney battling with Tatwini. Cheney gets it in deep. 30 seconds remaining on the power play. Kopak is back there to pick up the loose puck. Here's Joseph Kopak. Takes it up, cross side on a nice clever pass to Tweeney. Over the line's going to leave it there. Here's a chance. Oh my goodness, Tatwini, or pardon me, Tepana with a shot. And that was deflected over the goaltender into the netting. And that'll be out of play with only 18 seconds remaining. Well, folks, I want to thank you for listening to our broadcast. As you continue to do, we're going to share some numbers for you, some staggering numbers. And I'll put it this way. I'll give you a hint. There's more than one of you listening to the broadcast. I'm telling you, from coast to coast in Canada, the United States will provide you with those details during our intermission, but very pleased that you're enjoying the broadcast. That is why we do it. Compliments of the fine folks at Bell Alliant to make it all possible. And in previous years in this tournament, um, I was on hometeamsports.ca and all you had was audio. And some of you are really enjoying the video feed. Compliments of Bell Alliant to make that possible. We'll thank them one more time for that. Here's Kalujic. Gets the puck, drops it back. Long shot. Save is made by Patrick Gondro. As he was able to snag on to that one. The tournament MVP, Patrick Gaudreau, the veteran in there. 
On many nights, he had to be heroic for this team during the regular season and the playoffs. Now, they did lose to the host squad, the Hampton Hurricanes, but because the Hurricanes are hosting, Western Valley Panthers are New Brunswick's representative. Back behind Taylor now, he runs into the referee, and it goes to the left side corner again. Power play continues. Here's a quick shot. Save is made by Patrick Godreau. Looking pretty good in there, isn't he? And that'll do it for the power play. Nucks still lead 2-1. to one. Close to the two-minute mark into our second period. So Arsenal is on the ice along with Anderson and Sevic. Third line for Western Valley. And Sevic one hand on the stick. A weak clearing attempt. And Taylor has it. He too will try the right side. Off the back side of Arsenault, and the puck is bouncing, and Blantley is going to kick it up ahead, but no one home, and it's slapped around the boards yet again in Taylor. Another weak clearing attempt by Western Valley. They might get caught here, and they almost did if it wasn't for that blue line, and that was really close on that play. As Beardsill was hovering around center ice, pinching in. Beardsill plays on that second unit. On defense, plays with Gardner quite a bit. And speaking of Gardner, we should be seeing him in just a couple of minutes from now. Ten minutes, ten minute misconduct he was served with in the latter stages of the first period. In the right side corner it goes. Puck bounces in the air, was able to kick in from the glass, and Brooks overplayed that. Here come the Nucks back the other way. New Brunswick trapping. And it's picked up there on a bike. Cook. Cook tries to get around Nicola. Can't do it. Cook still in there around the boards. Nicola digging in. And so is Warren. And now we got some pushing and shoving right in the right side corner now. It's going to be Cook. And he wants to go. And the referees are getting involved and trying to break it up. But don't tell me these, team, these two teams don't want it. Brooks and guess who? Tepana. And Tepana gives a shove. And doing his best back belly flop was Tweedy. He just got nicked, but he went down like a sack of bricks. And because of that, Tepana might get an extra two-minute penalty for that. And we alluded to at the latter stages of the first period, Tepana doing a lot of talking. And it continues in the second period. Someone's got to calm him down on the benches. Otherwise, it might cost the Canucks dearly. And the referees are getting together, and they will... Of course, sort the, this out with 17-17 remaining in our second period. And I want to go over some facts and figures in relation to the viewers and the listeners who have been listening and watching from coast to coast. And Now, this was, uh, what day was this? As we welcome my, my sidekick on the right side here for a couple of seconds since the referees will be taking their time with that. So, in relation to viewership, uh, what are the facts and figures do we have here? Well, yeah. Day two, we saw that number jump uh, from 481 to 3,472, uh, which includes 474 viewers from the United States alone. And those are absolutely fantastic numbers. We'll break them down from province to province. And it's a long shot in the great save there early on. As play continues at the Hampton Community Arena, a power play. Tepan is in the box. He's only going to get two minutes, and back the other way, they'll dump the puck in far side. Can't catch up to it, looking for the loose puck. Was Roy Kopak. And the power play continues. Cheney over the next line, looking around, no play. He gets bumped there by Roy Kopak, back in his own zone now. And New Brunswick looking to settle up shop. Can they do it? They can't quite do it. Santa Mon brings it back to the point, Taylor. Slaps it ahead. Warren in front of the goal. Warren looking in front. Cheney's in there too, and it is picked up there by Santa Mond. Back to the blue line it goes, and that's over the stick of Blaney. And down the ice, Patrick Gondreau is going to play it. But he's going to lose the handle in the right corner. Goes behind the goal. Here's Wendell Kalujic. Kalujic plays it back to center ice to kill the clock with Joe Kopak. He'll take over. 
And Roy Kopak will fire at the length of the ice. And Godreau thought for a second he was going to hold it, but he'll lose to play it on the left side. Picked up there by Warren. Look at the strides by Warren. Cross ice over to Brooks. Brooks holding, holding. His mates are making a line change. A spinning backhand behind the netminder. And the Canucks are looking to kill on the PK, and they can't do it. It is held in on a clever play by Paul. Back in the right side corner, Paul tries to hold the line again. And that's gloved ahead. And that is called as Johnson picked up the loose puck after the glove there by Paul. But you're right, after day number one, we should keep in mind as well that we had one game. It was the Battle of New Brunswick early on, Western Valley and the Hampton Hurricanes. So 481 computers were logged in for that game alone. But day two of the event, four full games for you. That number jumps to over 3,500 computers. And the numbers, folks, are growing. Paul taking his time. Chips it head on the right side, looking for Vautour under his stick. And down the ice, Johnston chasing it. Power play is over. Full strength. Back behind the boards. Picking it up is Susan Arc. Can't clear it. It is held in. Here's Cheney. What's he going to do? Spins out in front. Here's a shot there by Brooks. That was blocked. Another shot on the short side. And where is it? And James Merritt is flopping around all over the place on the right side. Keeping the puck out. Back to the line. It's held in by Taylor. Here's a long slap shot deflected in front of the goal. And James Merritt will stand his ground in the blue paint. And more pushing and shoving now, folks, with 14.40 to go in our second period. And the Canucks lead this hockey game by a score of 2-1, to one, James Merritt. A couple of beauties in tight. Brooks was crashing in. He's a big boy. But James Merritt equal to that latest opportunity. And we should mention uh, 3,472 computers in day number two back in April the 4th. Folks from Quebec, Newfoundland, Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, Yukon, Ontario, British Columbia, the United States, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Nunavut, and Prince Edward Island. We're listening to day number two. With 748 computers logged in in the province of Prince Edward Island alone. Brooks is a long shot. That's deflected wide of the goal as play continues here at the Hampton Community Arena. Working the power play, another power play for New Brunswick. Plays it in down low, Warren behind the goal. He'll give it a go. Here's Santa Mond with Cheney. Number one power play unit. Quick shot. That's going to hit traffic in front of the goal. Right corner it goes. Here's Warren. Still with it. Warren looking around. Back to the point. Here's a good pass now to Cook. Cook. Or pardon me, that was Blaney. Slides it around the boards. Taylor with a shot on the right side. Blaney pinching in on the right side. Keeps it alive. Back behind the boards. And around James Merritt, centered out in front. Blaney with a drive, and that was blocked. And the loose puck is picked up by the Canucks, and away they go, a two-on-two, -two shorthanded. Over the line, Kalujic dumps it in deep. 13.50 to go, period number two. And it's back at center ice, quick line changes by both squads. And when the puck settles down, it's going to be New Brunswick. Here's Tweedy. Tweedy still has the puck. Looking around, here's a quick shot, pinched again from the right side, not getting all of it on the one time. A good idea by Tweedy to feed the point, and why not? The points are wide open on the power play for New Brunswick. Shot there by Cook, didn't get all of it as it was rolling on him, and James Merritt was able to snag that in mid-flight. Well, it's currently 5 o'clock Atlantic time. Quick shot on goal, and that was deflected just wide to Tweedy. Out there to kill the penalty for the Knucks. Get it to the slot area. Pardon me, the left circle. And that was blocker there by Merritt. Buck control, New Brunswick still. Give and go. Centers out in front. Brooks, he scores! And the second power play unit pays dividends for the Western Valley Panthers of New Brunswick. As Brooks got a nice rebound. On the left side of James Merritt and slid it in. Good work and hustle by Tweedy to settle the puck down in the offensive zone in exchange with a nice setup with Brooks in front. 
James Merritt made the initial save, but again, Brooks, big-bodied Brooks, likes crashing the net. That's his game, and it pays off yet again. And another penalty coming up here. And this time, it's going to be a hook. And it's going against New Brunswick. And it's going to be Sevek who plays that third line on the right side. So Johnston and Tweedy picking up the assists on the latest goal by Western Valley. Number 57, Brooks on the power play. Brooks going to take the face off shorthand. He's back on the ice. And it's around the boards. It's held in. 2-2. Settles it down on the power play for the Canucks. Back to 2-2. 2-2 looking around. Plays it in down low. Kalucic. Wendell looking through the legs, but lost it. And it's down the ice and fired down by Brooks. Joe Kopak behind his own goal. Settling it down. Here come the Canucks power play. Here's Tepana. Or Tutu, rather. Dumps the puck in. Tutu heading off to the bench. Plays it in down deep. Kartak. He wants to make a line change as well. Back to the point. The Canucks are changing but they still have the puck in deep. Back to the line, winding and firing, save, rebound! Oh, and that is blockered by Patrick Gaudreau. Great save on the blocker on the rebound, lightning quick. And we got a call behind the play. And I sure hope this is not a penalty fest. As we have a member of the Canucks who is bleeding behind the play. I think he took a high stick. And that is uh, Tatweeney, who is ailing on the bench of the Canucks right now. It was behind the play as the puck was going up ice to the right of Patrick Gaudreau. And Gaudreau is signaling for the officials there's blood on the ice. There's a lot of, there's a bit anyway, some drops, and they're not even going to check it out and clean it up. The referees don't see it all the way down behind the goal of Patrick Gaudreau, but play will continue. No penalty on the play, I should mind you. Power play continues for the Canucks. We are tied at two. And that is dumped right back in. And of course, here comes the rush on the power play. That is picked off on the far side by Taylor. Chipped ahead, no one there. Trapping is New Brunswick. Cheney back at center ice with Warren on the PK. On that top unit, delayed offside is... Puck went out to center ice. So Warren and Cheney trying to kill the penalty. As soon as I say that, they're going back to the bench area with 11 minutes and 44 seconds remaining in our second period. We are even Steven and should be. These games are going to be close. 2-2. Tweedy taking the draw for the Panthers. and Puck is one. Santa Mon trying to get the puck. Can't do it. Picked up there by the Knucks. They'll chip it in, knocked right back out by Cook. And down the ice with only 23 seconds remaining on the power play is Joe Kopak. On the right side, chipped up ahead, and look at the speed going down the wing. That was Tartak, the captain, sends the puck in front. And the goaltender, Patrick Gaudreau, falls. And New Brunswick is able to clear. And that'll do it for the power play with two seconds left on it. Maybe one more quick rush up the ice. Tartak, the captain, lost the handle. Blaney fires it right back in. That'll do it for the power play. An odd bounce. James Merritt is going to steer it aside. Less than 11 to go. Second period, we're all even. Steven at two. Votour off the boards on the far side. Delayed offside. Cummings trying to chase it down with Hargrove. And the puck squirts out to center ice. Opportunity knocking. It's a one on two. Nux are making a line change by himself. Deep in the zone. Susan Arc. Killing time with Cummings now. Cook is out there on the ice. Brooks banks it to the line. Held in. Long shot blocked. Settled down. Opportunity. Wendell Kalujic tried to, too much of a pretty move there. He went for the backhand, but it goes back to the point. Long shot off the leg of Cook. Back in on the right side corner it goes. And Susan Arc lost the handle. Picked up. And away goes New Brunswick. Cummings over the line. He's got Hargrove. Cummings with a shot. And that was gloved and held by James Merritt. Ten minutes and 11 seconds remaining in our second period. Third line on the ice for Western Valley Civic. 
Arsenault taking the draw with Anderson to his left. And puck skirmish, Arsenault sends it in front of the goal and scores! And Arsenault was at the faceoff dot. Confusion, it was picked up and just fired at the net. On the left of goaltender James Merritt and it found it. As the Western Valley faithful here in Hampton, New Brunswick are excited about that one. So Sevic will pick up the goal on the deflection and it handcuffed James Merritt. And for the first time this afternoon, the Western Valley Panthers representing New Brunswick have a lead in the hockey game, it's 3-2. And the Canucks, a little more desperation now behind the goal. Taylor, he's being bodied off the puck. Taylor, look at the scrap there. Taylor and 2-2 going at it. Puck battle won by New Brunswick. And it's chipped ahead, Santa Mond. Looking for Cheney, Cheney firing. And that goes wide of the goal. Merritt might have got a piece. That shot was so hard, goes back out to center ice again. Taylor. And Gardner is back on the ice for the Canucks. Certainly a positive. Gardner only 16 years old, folks. He plays a midget. But he's looking real good out there. Cook on the counter. Gets it up towards the middle. Looking for Cheney. Cheney gets it back from Santa Mond. Cheney by himself. Spins it out in front. No one home. And now an opportunity for the Canucks. Savajak hands it off. There's a long shot. That'll hit the defender. Cook and they'll play it on the short side. Back to the point on the rebound. Plays it ahead. Kalujic lost the handle back the other way. Breako pass for Warren. And that'll go all the way down the ice. And behind the play, Western Valley Panther got crushed in his own blue line. As Susan Ark took the latest hit. Less than nine to go in our second period. 3-2 Western Valley. And the puck is controlled by New Brunswick. They'll chip it out towards center ice. Johnston can't knock it down. Kept in there by the Canucks. But now it's turned over. Two on two. Tweedy over the line with Brooks to his right side. Tweedy crashing the net. And it stays out. Brooksy with a shot on the short side. And down was Merritt laying on the ice and kept it out. And a late shot after the whistle as the net came off the moorings. The same net. All the way down to the right side. And James Merritt keeping his composure. 8.35 remaining in period number two. We also encourage you as well to our 7 o'clock game again Atlantic time. The defending champions will be here. The Chester Clippers representing Nova Scotia will take on the host squad, the Hampton Hurricanes. Clippers, Hurricanes, semifinal number two. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock Atlantic time, but I'm sure we'll have a bit of a pregame for you a few minutes before puck drop. And New Brunswick back to the zone. At the line, Taylor chips it ahead, sends it out in front. Another shot there, Tweedy. And that was denied. Nicola. In his own zone, got Tartak in there with him, and Savajuk. And it's around the boards in the zone of the Canucks, and they can't clear. Opportunity knocking now, and a penalty coming up against the Canucks again. And the Canucks have been undisciplined here in the second period, taking some penalties. Just earlier on, they were down five on three. And that looks to be a charging call, is my understanding on that one. And Susan Ark. His first penalty of the tournament. So with a 3-2 lead, Western Valley. Power play opportunity. Warren, Sanamon, and Cheney. Gardner pokes it ahead, but it's centered out in front. Here's a shot. They score!
And it's going to be Santa Mond, top line on the right side. Good work down low by Warren. Gardner tried to clear it, but poked it right in front of the goal. And Santa Mond puts it on the board. A power play marker for Western Valley. And they now have a two-goal lead, folks. It's now a 4-2 hockey game for New Brunswick. Western Valley, a timeout being called by Donald Clark. And Santa Mond, the latest goal scorer in 24 games in the regular season for the Western Valley Panthers in 24 games. Santa Mond, seven goals, 11 assists, good for 18 points in 24 games. And that was absolutely crushed, a clutch rather, for Santa Mond to capitalize. He's 5'8", 170. 45 minutes in the sin bin for him during the regular season. And you can tell right now, momentum, Western Valley. And the Canucks are going to have to get that momentum back, which includes shots on goal. But the tournament MVP is Patrick Gaudreau for Western Valley, a tough goaltender to beat. And here come the Canucks. Here's Tepana in the right corner, working with Kalujic. Kalujic lost it. Cheney picks it up, chips it ahead, and another penalty being called. This time it's going to be a tripping call. And is that Warren going off? So Warren's going off on the trip. And now down by two, 747 remaining in our second period. The Canucks now will go on the power play. And Warren in the box, Brooks takes the draw, can't win it clean. Kalujic holding, winding, holding, holding, right circle. Following the puck, he's being bodied by Taylor. Kalujic. Back to the point, Gardner. Gardner holding, back down low to Kalujic again. Back to the point, it's held in, Kopak Sends it in now to the corner. Holding, looking, there's a shot. And that goes wide of the goaltender, 2-2 with the latest. Gardner, back to Kalujic. Kalujic holding, holding, firing. Oh, and that just goes wide, and that was laced to the net. Picked up by 2-2. And he's going to lose the handle as he was being forced by Brooks. And it's held in, however, on a good keep. Kalujic on the backhand, 2-2, couldn't control it. And it's swatted down the ice by Brooks. James Merritt leaves it there for Gardner. And look at the speed on the outside. They'll gain the zone. Sends it in behind the goal. Kartak, 2-2 on the ice as well. Blaney can't catch up to it. Knocked down by Johnston. Gives it away to Kartak. Kartak couldn't control it. Blaney lost it as well in 2-2. Battles for it on the far side boards on the power play. 2-2, Kartak, 2-2. Still with it, Kalujic, Kalujic cuts in front, Kalujic on the short side, and Patrick Gaudreau covering the bottom of the net and hangs on to it, only 45 seconds remaining on the power play, but these Canucks are explosive. They do have options. And these were not the, the best two periods we have seen by the Canucks at the tournament, but there's still time. Back to the point, quick shot, save is made, rebound, another save by Godro. Laying on the ice, he took it in the chest, and it's all Canucks down on the power play. With 30 seconds left to go. Back behind the goaltender, it's centered out in front, and it's battered away on a good play by Vautour. Down the ice, Tweedy chasing after it. It is picked up by James Merritt towards center ice, and Blaney's going to fire it right back in again. Only 15 seconds left to go on the power play. Western Valley making a line change with the penalty killers. On the right side, and a delay call coming up. A slashing call coming up against New Brunswick. As the veteran Craig Cole makes another call. But this time, it's going to be the latest goal scorer. It's going to be Santa Mon, who's going in the penalty box. A five-on-three situation for the Canucks for seven seconds. Seven seconds only. And they're going to need a shot, and they're going to need a quick. Kalujic wins the puck battle. Susan Ark holding. Kalujic down low. Back to the point. Here's Kopak. And a save is made. Traffic in front of the goaltender. Back to the point again. Kopak winding and firing, and that was blocked just wide. Paul redirected that. On the right side corner, rattles behind the net. Wendell Kalujic picks it up. 
Kalujic holding, holding. Susan Ark in front of the goal. Kalujic looking around. Susan Ark holding, holding with a shot. And that is blocked by Cook. He's able to clear it. And here's Cheney busting in on goal. Cheney going in on Merritt. Oh, what a save by James Merritt. Possibly a game saver. Another shot as they hold the line. Picked up there by 2-2. As, pardon me, Roy Kopak And Kopak sends it out towards center ice. Kalujic settles it down. He's got 2-2 with him. And that'll do it for the Canucks. Only one minute left to go on the power play. Western Valley almost struck shorthanded. Compliments of Cheney just seconds ago. And here they go again. Johnston sends the puck in deep. 45 seconds remaining on the power play as James Merritt's going to leave it there. Four minutes and 30 seconds. That's it. That remain in the second period. Back out to center, but that's broken up by Johnston. Johnston working with Brooks. That's intercepted, however. It's a one-on-two. Over the line, Kalujic. Leaves it there, looking for it to Tweeney. And it's dumped down the ice by New Brunswick. Only 20 seconds remain on the power play. Roy Kopak settles it down. Looks towards center ice. And it's a two on three rush. He'll leave it there. Here's Kalujic. Back to the point to Tweeney. Kalujic in the corner. Kalujic looking around to Tweeney at the blue line. Holding, holding with a shot. And stick in the lane. Hits the Raptors and out of play is Cheney. Bumps with Roy Kopak. Interesting strategy there by the Canucks as Roy Kopak usually plays the point on that top defensive unit, but he's up front on the power play. Tartak, the captain, Nikola, and Savuchuk. And Cheney's going to pick his pocket. Cross ice on a clever pass to San Amand, who's out of the penalty box. Five on five, San Amand. Warren and Cheney on the ice. Number one unit for Western Valley. Up the middle, that's knocked down by Paul and sent down the ice. Gardner can't control it. Oh, maybe he can. It's brought down there by Tatweeney to the line, but it's held in by Paul. Up along the boards, behind the goaltender, and that's rifled around by Tepana and backhanded down the ice. That will not be an icing call. Patrick Gaudreau in his goal, leaves it there, Blaney. Up to center ice, looking for Arsenault. He got tripped up on the play and continues the puck right on the right side. Arsenault still with it. Right in the front of the benches and where's the puck and it's finally picked up by the Canucks. It's a one on two and an odd man rush and of course, he was spilt in there with Susan Ark and it slapped down the ice for an icing call as that was batted in mid flight by Sevic. 2.52 remains in our second period. Western Valley Panthers, an expansion team in the province of New Brunswick. And the crowd getting into it. Here's Kalujic. Taking the draw for the Knucks. There's a long shot. Hits traffic. Picked up there by the Canucks. They'll rotate it in down low. Looking for an option back to the point. But that's chipped ahead on the left side as New Brunswick is able to get puck possession. Hargrove with a golden opportunity in down low. Merritt had to be sharp. Right side corner it goes. Cummings trying to help him out. There's a sharp angle shot that doesn't find the net and the Knucks are able to clear it out towards center ice. Oh, and they'll bring it in the zone. A two on one, diving is Brooks in front of the goal. And that was redirected in front by Cummings on a clever play and Cummings got dropped for his efforts but picking up the puck is Taylor. The D-man goes wide on the defender, throws a wrist shot on goal. James Merritt, no problem with that and it's back out towards center again. New Brunswick trying to defend this latest rush and here is going to be Kalujic. Kalujic 2-2 along the boards. Is it held in? No, it is not. And it's back out towards center ice. Canucks regain possession. Gardner chips it ahead and it's water right back down again. Canucks are making a forward line change. No hustle for the puck for New Brunswick and it's picked up there by Johnston. Johnston almost got a return pass. It would have been on a breakaway. Brooks over to Johnston. Quick shot saved by James Merritt with the glove. And he'll hang on. Patrick Godro. All the way down to the left side, slapping a stick on the ice. 
Getting into that positive mindset, the tournament MVP trying to keep his team in this game and advance to tomorrow's championship game. Brooks. And puck goes behind the goal to Ipana. Slaps it around. Canucks can't clear. It's held in. Votour with a shot. Stopped by Merritt. Right corner it goes. Votour back at the blue line looking to pinch. And we got a penalty coming up against the Canucks all the way down in their own zone on the near side corner. And the injured player for a second gets right back up. Gets, takes a high five from his teammate. And going to the box and slamming his stick is Joe Kopak. Not happy with that as he hit his man. And the call on that infraction. It's only a two-minute penalty as Kopak is in the box. Could be interference. Could be a couple of things. Cheney at the left point. Slides it in down low. Boarding is the call. Cheney on the left point. Sends the puck in front. Looking for one more minute left to go in the second period. And a two-on-one shorthanded over the line. Tapano with a shot. Rebound and couldn't get it in. Susan Ark as the puck was skipping on him. Susan Ark with a golden opportunity. And the Canucks could not capitalize, who trailed the scoreboard 4-2. Cheney, no hurry, up the ice on a good pass, Warren. Warren chips it in, Santa Mon chasing after it on the power play. Can't pick it up, Beersel had his number, and it gets to the line and clearing all the way down to the zone of Western Valley, and of course, that's Blaney. Blaney up the left boards, looking for Cheney, can't connect, and the Canucks back in their own zone. They're shorthanded, they'll just dump the puck in with only 15 seconds remaining on the in the penalty rather, and it's gonna be Blaney up the middle, and Lawson, here's a chance. Oh, and that's just over the glove of Patrick Godro with four seconds left, maybe one more opportunity. And it's off the boards and down the ice, and that will do it for period number two. And a wild entertaining hockey game, and it's gonna get a lot better in the third period as the Canucks have some work to do. It is 4-2 for Western Valley, New Brunswick over the Canucks after two periods of play. Well, we'll have an intermission for you. Zamboni will be on the ice. And when we come back, possibly the conclusion, third period action between Western Valley and the Canucks. Western Valley 4 and the Canucks 2 as you are watching and listening on Bell Alliant.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hampton Community Arena in beautiful Hampton, New Brunswick. Your score after two periods in the books, folks. It is New Brunswick. The Western Valley Panthers lead the Canucks by a score of 4-2. Getting the goals for Western Valley, Johnston, Brooks, Sevick, and Senamond. Replying for the Canucks, Tatweeney and Roy Kopak. As play continues in the third period, a full 20-minute period for you. And the Canucks are down by two and they start in their own zone. Brooks in there with Johnston. Johnston has the puck. Looking around. He's got bumped off it. Off the netting behind Brooks in front. Here's Johnston. And the puck is bouncing on him. And down the ice. Compliments of Wendell Kalujic. As there's still five more seconds remaining on the power play for Western Valley. It was an extended from the second period. And the power play is over. And the Nucks have work to do. As they're back in their own zone yet again, James Merritt. His final year in junior hockey. Could this be his final period? Kopak. Here's Roy doing all the work there on the boards. Picked up there by Tutu. Crossover now to Karatak. Karatak over the line. Works around Blaney. Karatak look at the speed, but he forgot the puck. As there's a lot of water on the ice in that corner. And it costs an offensive chance for the Nucks in the offensive zone. But they can't clear as Tepana holds the line. And it's kicked out to center. Roy Kopak slides the puck in over the goaltender. And to Tweeney pinching in. Can't find it. Keeping it alive there is Tepana. To Tweeney. Brings it in down low. Susan Ark. Number one line out there for the Nucks. To Tweeney. Right corner. Can he stop it? It goes to the line. Roy Kopak can't hold the line. Delayed offside. So to Tweeney is forced to regroup at center ice. Pinching in on the left side. Susan Ark can't control it. Tepana tries to help out. It goes to the line. And it's chopped in by to Tweeney. And New Brunswick will bring it out towards center ice. Johnston. He got spun around. To Tweeney falls on the ice. No call. Play continues to Tweeney. Cross ice now to his defense. Roy Kopak on the left side. Tepana. Tepana battling with Votour. He's going to win the battle on the cross. Crease pass on the right side was to Tweeney. And the puck was bouncing on him and couldn't connect. Joe Kopak up head on the left side. He's going to find his teammate on the wing and around the boards. Picked up Susan Ark. Sends it out in front. Kopak with a shot. Tepana with a shot. And that got through in a good save. Back in the left point. Roy Kopak keeps it alive. And the Nux are forced to regroup back at center ice as New Brunswick is able to clear. Icing is not called as Joe Kopak swatted the puck in from center ice. Both teams making changes. Two minutes and 30 seconds into our third period. And it's at center ice. Pinching in there is Blaney, the defender. Blaney lost control. Now he'll get the puck. What's he going to do with it? Pried off there by Nicola. Nicola can't get it to go at center ice. And it's brought back in from center ice. As Cheney was ahead of the play and still in the offensive zone. So offside is the call. Third line. Nicola. Tartuck. And Savajuk on the ice for the Knucks, but you can't anticipate the top two lines for the Knucks being on the ice at will as they trail to Beardsill in his own zone right corner. It's chipped ahead, Nakola. Cross ice pass on the open wing. It's swatted right back down by New Brunswick. Delayed offside, they're forced to regroup. Gardner. On the right side and a good pass to Beardsill. Chips it ahead, looking for Tartuck. The captain can't catch up to it. Here's Warren. Slides it in, gets the return pass, and it's down deep in the Nux zone. Beardsill is colliding with Cheney. Beardsill wins the puck battle. Left corner, Beardsill. Taps it ahead by Tartuck. Gets it out of the zone. Chasing after it there is 2-2. 2-2 over the line. Takes a shot. That's blocked. 2-2. Look at him go. 2-2. In the right corner, but he's going to lose the puck. Picked up, and here comes the counter. Blaney up ahead on the right side. That's batted down by Joe Kopak, and he'll keep it alive for the Canucks. Wendell Kalujic over the line. Kalujic winding and firing. Pad save, and the rebound will slide, and the Canucks are forced to regroup at center as New Brunswick is able to clear. But it's swatted right down again. Blaney lost control, battling with his teammate. They got crossed up in their own zone. Almost cost them a goal right there. The Nucks now in the offensive zone. 2-2. Two -two. 
Settles it down. Kopak at the point keeps it alive. And it wraps around the board on the near side. All kinds of pressure now by the Nux who trail by two. And they're going to need one in a fairly bit here. Is Terra Attack working it in down low with Kalujic. Kalujic sends it out in front. 2 2 was dropped in front of the goal. No penalty continues. But a clever blast in the high slot was knocked down by Patrick Gaudreau. And it's back out at center ice again. Joe Kopak lost it. Gets it right back again, tries the right side. Kartak gets around one, gets around two. There's a long shot, deflects wide of the goal, and Patrick Gondro will hang on to it on the short side. And with almost five minutes into our third period, the scoreboard has not changed. Tepana will center this line and take the draw. Susanark and Tatwini. And it goes now to Susinark. Brings it in down low to Tepana. Back to the point. Miscommunication down the ice yet again. Nux, good pressure in the offensive zone to Tweeney. Chips it ahead now to Tepana, who bats it in. Paul, he's first on it for the Panthers. Over to Brooks. Lost the handle. Back to the point. Winding and firing as Kopak save is made. And the rebound is cleared to the side. And New Brunswick brings it out. Western Valley Panthers. Ahead of the line. A solid check there by Kopak. On the far side boards. Brooks is offside. Western Valley's making a line change, but they got to hurry. Opportunity knocking here. Roy Kopak over the line. Still has it. And where is it? It's blocked. And New Brunswick will bring it away. It's a one on one. Kopak with a hit. And back there to make the defensive play was Susan Ark. And he'll get around two. He'll get around three and make it look easy. Susan Ark over the line with a shot. And now it's batted just wide of the goal. The 20 back down low. Susan Ark lost it. And it's batted down the ice by New Brunswick. Brunswick and they will gladly ice it as the Canucks now are coming out flying in this third period as you would anticipate there is not a whole lot of talking by the Nucks now let me tell you no pushing no communication with Western Valley as they did the first two periods at least a couple of players did it's all business now Western Valley along the boards Gardner is back there at center waiting for it he's backing up too much there's a shot and that was blockered there by James Merritt. And then a play. And the captain, Tartak, who will play wing for the majority of this contest, will center this line. Tartak taking the draw. With Nicola to his right is one. Cheney with a shot, rebound, and James Merritt will swing it out of the way with a goal stick. Heads up there by James Merritt. More pushing there by Cummins in the corner, but the Canucks will not retaliate. In fact, they'll make a line change. And that third line, Tartak, Nikola, and Savajak playing strong for the Canucks. But we will get a heavy dose of Wendell Kalujic. And he's on the ice right now, taking the draw for the Canucks. Loses it. And it's sent out in front of the goal, and that was almost tipped in there by Hargrove. But the pass was behind him. And it's Kartak over the line, dumps it in, chasing it down is Wendell Kalujic. He's bodied off the puck, and they'll try the opposite side, does New Brunswick, and they can't get it out. More pressure now by the Nux. Can they control the puck? 2-2 falls, gets right up again. 2-2 still has it, plays it in down low, looking for Kalujic, doesn't get to him, intercepted, and New Brunswick again. Contented to fire the puck the length of the ice with only 13.23 now. Time is starting to be a factor for the Canucks. The question is, they need two to tie. They trail 4-2. And remember, the tournament MVP after round-robin play is the goalie they got to beat, Patrick Goudreau. Goudreau 2-0 with a 2.50 goals against. And it's Western Valley. Right in front of the bench, Brooks tries to pry it free and it squirts out towards center ice. Roy Kopak sends the puck in deep. Blandley's out there to pick it up. Blandley looking around. That's batted out of the air. No high stick. 2-2. Having a strong third period. And here comes Western Valley. Over the line. Dumps it in. Merritt's going to play it off to the same corner on the right side. Johnston 
Follows up on the play. It's batted out to the high slot. Picked up by Wendell Kalujic. On the right side, 2-2. Back to Kalujic on the left side. It's center ice. Chips it ahead. And Roy Kopak chasing it. Can't find the bouncing puck. And it's back out at center ice. New Brunswick makes a line change as they dump the puck in on the far side corner. Joe Kopak looking around. Cross ice now up the middle to Tweedy with a nice pass. Tepana over the line. He's by himself to Tweedy trying to catch up on the play. Tepana takes a fall on the right side corner. He was drilled up along the boards. Brooksy, pardon me, Taylor slides the puck around and it gets by to Tweedy and Kopak who fires the puck right back in New Brunswick. Darts it from their own end and that's blockered aside by James Merritt. No icing. Joe Kopak takes care of Anderson. Kopak slides it ahead, Tepana on the right side to 20. He's got a lot of speed. He's bodied off the puck as well, and the hits are flying now. 12 to go in the third. Back to the blue line. Roy Kopak off the glass. Pardon me, that's off the board. And Kopak, can he hold the line? Where is it? And it's going to hit the meshing over the glass, and therefore out of play. And, and we're watching as both teams are making line changes. No communication whatsoever. The first two periods, a lot of chirping, but right now, that is not the case. Tartak centering with Nakola and Savajuk. It is won by the Nux. Back to the blue line. Beerzel slides the puck in on the short side, and that eludes the winger. Savajuk, Nakola can't catch up to it. Back to the right point, can't hold it in. Slides down the ice, and there's Gardner. He's going to set it up. Gardner. On the right side, off the boards, too strong for Nicola. And it's back out towards center ice, and New Brunswick is going to slide the puck in. A bit of dump and chase for Western Valley. James Merritt out of his goal. And it's around the boards on the right side, Nicola. Up the middle to Tartuck. Here comes the captain over the line. That's blockered away. Savajic takes his man out up along the side boards. Goes to the line. Is it held in? Yes, it is on a spinning backhand. Beerzel keeps it alive. Canucks are making a line change, and New Brunswick will bring it out, but that was behind Cheney and down the ice. No contact made, no icing. Gardner off the boards on the right side. A weak clearing attempt. This gets it out towards center, and it's played. And Joe Kopak dumps the puck in on the right side. And New Brunswick contented to fire the puck right back out, and Joe Kopak's clearing attempt down the ice is deflected. And that puck goes down to play for a stoppage. 10 minutes and 33 seconds. No goals have been scored in this third period. Western Valley Panthers have a 4-2 lead. Johnston, Brooks, Sevecic, pardon me, Johnston, Brooks, and Sevek and St. Amand scoring the goals for Western Valley to Tweeney and Roy Kopak replying for the Canucks. Semi-final number one, semi-final number two will begin this evening. We will tell you all about that before we end the broadcast. 10.27 now. That remains in our third period. Kalujic taking the draw. Just outside of the blue line of New Brunswick. Kopak gets a stick on it. 2-2. Settles it down. Picked up by Warren. Number one line on the ice for Western Valley. Back behind the goal, Roy Kopak. Chips it ahead. Kalujic got a stick on it. Back to Kalujic up the middle. 2-2 in Kalujic. Miscommunication. Roy Kopak. At center ice, dumps the puck in off the boards, chasing it down is going to be Blaney. Blaney around the boards, weak clearing attempt, long shot by Joe Kopak. And that was chipped just wide of the goal around the boards. Here's Brooks. Brooks pries up the puck along the skates. Back to Kopak, there's a long wrister, no traffic in front, and it's settled down on the right side. Crashing the net, looking for it is 2-2 in front of the goal, doesn't get the pass. It's held in there. Good puck control, Nux, but can they get a shot away as time is taken with 9.35. Centers the puck in front and a weak backhand in front of the goal and no problem by the tournament MVP goaltender Patrick Gondreau. He was able to hang on. Well, good cycling by the Nux. Some very good passes in the offensive zone. But they're looking too cute out there. Keep it simple. Get it on goal if you're down by two with 9.31. Exactly the predicament. Gardner with a blast, and that is blocked. Back to Beerzo with a shot, and where is it? It's behind the goal to Tweeney with the latest opportunity. Solid hit by Beerzo. And it's back out to center. Gardner finds the open wing, but a good defensive play to get a stick on it. Well, Sevek back out at center. It is chipped ahead, and that is into the netting. 
over the glass and on a plane. Whoever came up with that idea to have netting over the glass to protect the bystanders, it's a pretty good idea. And we have 9-19 that remains in the third period. 4-2 lead for Western Valley. And what a story. Western Valley is the Panthers. And the crowd getting into it now with nine to go. Tatwini dumps the puck in. It is picked up there by Tepana. Tepana's shot. That was blocked. Goes to Gardner at center ice. The defensive D-man who doesn't want to get caught. We usually see Gardner pinch on several occasions. But this game he has not been. He's been playing back there wanting to make sure. And to Tweeney. Tepana eludes a hit there by Warren. And back the other way. Gardner with the poke check. And the puck found the mark. Cheney back to the point. It's picked off there by Susan Ark. He's got some options with Tepana. Susan Ark, quick shot on goal. And that was stopped there as to Tweeney. Was the third man in and wide open on the right side. He was banging his stick on the ice, but didn't get the pass. And now with 8.25 to go in the third. Semi-final number one, championship game tomorrow. Kalujic wins a clean Roy Kopak. Slides it in Kalujic. He's got 2-2. Kalujic holding, holding, winding. And that's going to hit his stick as the give credit to the Western Valley Panthers. Not only do they have the tournament MVP in net, but they also are blocking the lanes to the net and getting their stick in the passing and shooting lanes and blocking a lot of shots. That is the opportunity for the Canucks. And... I just got word that Gardner is not 100%. We'll say a lower body injury for Gardner for the Canucks. And that is why he's not he's not offensive as he likes to be. He's playing a cool, calm and collective back there. And, but he's still on the ice helping his squad, all right. And here comes the latest opportunity. Paul, the D-man pinching in in the offensive zone. Pardon me, that's Tweedy. And it's back out to center ice. Kartak chasing it. As it was dumped in, Johnston has it on the skate, spinning backhand, Kopak fires the puck right back in again. And we have a stoppage in play to the delayed offside with, and that was a forced offside. And therefore the puck will come all the way down to the zone of the Canucks to the right of James Merritt. Tepana wins it clean to Tweeney. Up along the boards is kept alive by Beardsell, and it's slapped out towards center. Tepana winding, firing, and that was partially blocked yet again by Taylor. Western Valley blocking shots and doing what you got to do to maintain and hold on to a lead. Semi-final one on the left side. Susan Ark dumps the puck in. It goes along the boards on the near side. The pinching in from the blue line is Beardsell. He's hit. Up along the boards, Tepana, one hand on the stick. Now two hands on the stick, he's chasing the puck carrier. It is won by Taylor, and Gardner could not pick it up. And he waits for it now, backs up in his own zone. Hands it off, Beardsill up the middle, Tepana over the line. He'll give and go, long shot, and again blocked in front. And the puck rolls on the goaltender in the blue paint, and Patrick Gondra will smother that. Six minutes and 55 seconds is what remains in semifinal number one, third period. In case, in case, there will be an overtime, a 10-minute overtime, then a flood, then a full 20-minute overtime. Just in case, Gardner with a blast. And again, blocked in front of Patrick Gondro. Here's a bank shot, and New Brunswick the other way. Here's a shot, they score! And Matt Warren, top line on the center in a clearing attempt by Western Valley in their own zone towards center ice. A bank shot in front of the benches and the speed by Warren cruising down the lane. It was a one-on-one -on -one with Warren and James Merritt. And Warren went to his right, then went to his left. 
Merritt was following. He wasn't fooled, but a roofer shot by Warren as Merritt was covering the bottom of the net. And it's now desperation time for the Canucks, who made last year's championship game. But they'll need three more in a span of six minutes if they want a chance at it again. Chasing it down is 2-2. Sends it in the high slot. And Kopak's shot goes well wide of the goal. Knucks now all over New Brunswick and they'll chip it out towards center ice and all the way down. New Brunswick making a full scale line change. Joe Kopak looks up center ice. Doesn't find anyone open. Takes his time and sends it to an open lane on the left side. No one home. Bit of confusion out there. And New Brunswick sends it all the way down and all the way down for an icing. Under six to go, 5.50. Third period, 5-2, Western Valley. Western Valley, a rookie team in the New Brunswick Junior Hockey League. A new franchise who was given the opportunity. And they're taking full advantage right now. An absolute Cinderella story in the making. As Joe Kopak swats across ice. Susan Ark over the line. Sends it out in front looking for it to Tweeney. And they had his pocket picked. Back out at center, it swatted right back in again. Chasing it down is 15, Susan Ark. Putting pressure on the puck carrier. Back to the blue line, Joe Kopak. Windering, firing on the delayed offside. The Canucks are forced to regroup at center. Tepana forcing the issue. New Brunswick just clears it all the way down. That'll miss the goal and go down for an icing. With 5.22 to go in our third, a 5-2 lead. And I'll talk to Mr. Walker, who's... As play continues now with five minutes left to go in the third, it's one right back down again, all the way down, of course. And that's going to be icing against New Brunswick. Five to go in our third period. Thanks a lot for joining us wherever you are. 5-2 lead as Gaudreau is getting some high fives by his teammates, but this game is not done yet. Tepana. Taking the faceoff dot, wins it clean. Slides it over now, back to the point. It's held in at the line, barely, but it is Beardsel. Bank shot, holding the line on a clever play, Tartak, who's playing the point. We haven't seen Gardner. I don't know if he's going to be back on the ice yet. His day may be done. Beardsel, still with it. Looking around, they trail by three. To Tweeney. Cross ice now, Susan Ark gains the zone. He's being watched by Taylor. And Brooks, but it goes to the point, and that was just wide of the goal. It almost eluded Goudreau, and down the ice, a 2-1-1 New Brunswick over the line. Shot save made as Warren had the puck, and he centers the puck in, looking for Cheney. He got tied up to Tweeney on the right side now on a clever pass, and it's intercepted, and back the other way. It's a one-on-three. It's a three-on-zero. Oh. Shoot, save, re rebound. They score. And back-to-back -back goals by Warren. And that's going to boost the lead for Western Valley as Matt Warren in the regular season, 26 games played, 9 goals, 10 assists, good for 19 points. And probably his best goal to date right there. It is now a 6-2 lead for the Western Valley Panthers as James Merritt is going to change his goal stick. And get back, get his head back in the game here. Four to go, and the Canucks trail by four. So Johnston and Santamon picking up the assist on the Warren goal. 
And now New Brunswick playing the trap back at center ice. Four players deep. And it is Wendell Kalucic. Gets around one, takes a shot, short side. And that is kicked out by Goudreau. Back in the left circle, and it's chipped out towards center ice. That'll hit the linesman on the far side. That'll leave a mark. And the Canucks have it yet again. Look at the speed by Kartak. Around Brooksy. Lost the handle on the poke check by Brooks. Plays in front of the benches at center ice. It is picked up, and here come the Nucks yet again. Kalujic lost the handle, picks it up again. Cross ice. Kartak. He got spilt as he gained the zone, and is that going to be a penalty? Yes, it is. And with 3.05 to go in our third period, it's going to be a power play opportunity for the Canucks, who trail 6-2. James married in his goal and a bit of confusion in front of the benches. A busy job for the officials uh, this afternoon in game one of our two-game afternoon. Veteran Craig Cole and Joel McAllister, the referees, and working the line, Mike Webb and Matt Serrell. Tepana. Quick shot and scores right off the draw. We're listening to the PA announcer in relation to the latest penalty and the Nucks right off the draw back to the point and a beauty of a shot that eludes the goaltender the tournament MVP and I believe that was Ole with the latest dart we haven't seen a lot of Ole on the ice now makes it a 6-2 hockey game Nucks down by 3 with less than 3 minutes left to go Timeout has been called on the ice. We'll take a timeout here for 30 seconds in the booth. And when we come back, your conclusion as you are watching and listening on Bell Alliant. Good goal there by Oli. Next, bring it right, right back in. Tepana takes a quick shot. That was intended, however, a pass to, to Tweeney. Hit the defender and back into the goaltending of Patrick Gaudreau. And now we got some words of conversation behind the goaltender. James Merritt still in net. Knocks down by three. Six threes to score with 247. That remains in our third period. Now Tepana and Tatooine normally on the left side is going to play it on the right. And we're going to have a new puck drop. It was going to be to the right of goaltender Patrick Gondro, but now it's going to be outside of the blue line of New Brunswick. Tepana, Tatooine, and Susanark. It is one. Here's Ole. Chips it ahead now to the left side to Tatooine. And Susanark tries to hold the line and does. Slams it to the net with Tatooine colliding and crashing the net. And a good save there by Patrick Gondreau through traffic. No rebound. Two minutes and 34 seconds. All that remains in our third period. Well, the Canucks, they made the championship game last year. And uh, they lost out to the Clippers of Nova Scotia. And that was their best final at this event. Again, when you make the finals, this Nux team was on the up and up year after year, and all that was missing was a championship. And with two to go in our third, they trail by three. One more last gas now for the Canucks. They can't get the puck in deep. Kopak with a solid hit at center ice, and it's turned over. Tweedy over the line! Does, makes a move on James Merritt. And James Merritt nods his head as Tweedy apologizes for that inconvenience. 
James Merritt, not aggressive by nature. He's okay with that. Two minutes and 14 to go in the third. And what's in the mind of James Merritt? He has been the number one go-to goaltender for the Canucks for a few years. His last kick of the can. And I'm sure we'll have a conversation with him along with the Nucks as we traditionally, when we say goodbye to teams at this event, we like to say goodbye to them personally and thank them for this experience. And it's back at center. Chopped right back down the ice. Bounced on Merritt. 155 to go in the third. Canucks need some shots on goal. Tartak looking ahead there for Nakola. That was broken up at center. Play in the trap is New Brunswick. They'll make a line change on the fly, and it's up ahead. Here come the Canucks yet again at center ice as Beerzil tried to do it by himself. Couldn't do it. 135 to go in our third period. 6-3. There's a lead pass, and that'll find the mark. Over the line with a shot. And a save is made as Beerzil usually plays defense, but he's playing a forward for a shift. He wants a shot on goal. He let her rip, but... Patrick Gondreau had his number with 125, and we'll do a bit of a uh, wrap-up, a uh, pregame wrap-up, or when this game comes to a completion. Beersill got hammered up along the boards in front of his bench. He's slow to get off. James Merritt plays it in on the left side. It's going to be Kalujic. Looking for 2-2, but nothing is working right now for the Knucks with one minute left to go in our third period. And look at the speed on the outside. Karatak lost it again inside his line. Long shot that was blocked in front. And swatted aside and down the ice. Talking behind the play there with Cheney and Kopak. Play continues, however. 40 seconds left to go. Ole is back there. He'll backhand it about all the way down the ice. Icing is waved off as that was deflected. Taylor. Boards on the far side. Cheney picks it up. Cross ice at center. Two on two the other way. It's chipped ahead and down the ice. 20 seconds remain. In the third period, it's play is called. As the officials are paying very close attention. And we got ourselves a penalty is what it is. is looks to be an interference call. And Karatak is in the box for the Nucks with 23 seconds left to go. And the Western Valley Panthers. Interference is the call. New Brunswick have the puck and you can hear the crowd and the support from the folks at Western Valley. And we'll just end it with the sounds of the game, folks. And you can put this game in the books, a 6-3 victory for the Western Valley Panthers. And the Panthers are going to make the championship game tomorrow afternoon. An incredible story, an expansion team, a rookie franchise who are able to have that opportunity to play in the Junior Hockey League. And what a season they had. They made a run in the playoffs. They're representing the province and they're making the championship game at the Atlantic Championships. And now we're going to have the handshakes at center ice. And how appropriate is that? Western Valley and the Canucks now. As James Merritt. I'll assume he's wiping the sweat from his eyes. As he's the last to have the handshakes. He's getting some hugs as well. James Merritt, quality person, quality goaltender. And his career is done with the Canucks in junior hockey, but a successful one. Canucks could not win the championship. He wanted the championship, had a conversation with him on a few occasions. It just wasn't in the cards. But a valiant effort just the same. And of course, both teams are lining up for the Player of the Game awards for both clubs. And we'll stick around for that.
And Karatak with a great game for him. As he capitalized on two opportunities, two assists for him. And Matt Warren was all over the place for New Brunswick. And the Canucks, as you can see on your screen, are raising their sticks. And if we had a stick in the broadcast booth, we'd be doing just the same. And they're going to have a team picture. And a good salute by the crowd for both teams. So I'm with my friend Mr. Walker inside the broadcast booth. Uh, we just seen the conclusion uh, between New Brunswick, the Western Valley Panthers, and the team from Nunavut. The Canucks, and uh, your thoughts on what you've seen in the game here this afternoon. Well, you know what? Uh, I would have to say that uh, Western Valley has improved in every game we've watched them play. And um, the funny thing is, before the game, I was talking with the uh, representative from um, Hockey North, which traveled with them, the uh, Calgary team. And uh, I said to them, you know, I, I've watched your team play. I'm impressed with their team. And that they, um, you know, there was no funny business after the play unless they touched you know, someone ran into their goaltender or whatnot. And I think we saw them get away from their game plan a little bit today. A um, little bit more stuff after the whistle. I don't know whether they're squeezing their sticks, trying too hard, or just maybe a little bit of pressure. But overall, I'd have to say that I'm, over, I'm very impressed with a group of kids who actually don't play together to come here and represent their country or their, their province as well as they did and to have the chemistry they did on the ice. Uh, it's impressive. And year after year, we've seen at this tournament that the Canucks have been improving year after year. I remember my first broadcast. Uh, it was in Fredericton, New Brunswick, at uh, the Junior C's. Um, and I'll tell you, uh, they, they didn't make the playoff rounds on semifinal Saturday. They didn't get any wins whatsoever. But they always competed hard. They always gave it their all. It didn't matter what the score was. A classic example tonight. And then the very next year, uh, they, they made the playoff rounds. And again, last year as well, making the championship game. And again, the Canucks came a long way year after year to compete in this tournament. And compete they did. So the folks who are listening up north, you know, shake their hand. Give them a big hug because they represented you very, very well. Uh, they couldn't seal the deal. I'm sure they wanted to make the championship game. No doubt about it. But again, they came up a bit short here this afternoon. But let's talk about the Western Valley Panthers. You know this team more so than I do. You talked about the resilience. I mean, how do you explain it to the folks at home? A rookie team, a rookie franchise, and now you're in the championship game in the Maritime Northern. I mean, how, I mean, what kind of a story is that? Well, as you said, yeah, I have seen them play. You know, being involved with the Hampton team, we went to the seventh game, and I can tell you, you know. It starts with their goaltending. Uh. He didn't win uh, tournament MVP for nothing. Uh -huh. He is a stellar goaltender, and it works from the back end out. They have some high-quality forwards there. Um, there's some pressure. They put a lot of pressure on their forwards or on, on the, the other team's defensemen. Uh, they're good from out of their zone, and today they played a good team game. Yeah. I would probably say, you know, as a coach, you know, if someone says, well, how, how long did you play a game? You, you hear that thing, Tortorella often says, you got to play a full 60 minutes to win. I would say that the Western Valley team played almost a, a 50 minute game today and, and that's at this level that's impressive because uh, they're not the NHL right and they're here for a reason and they played well and they got some great support with their fans and uh, hopefully the there's a repeat of the provincial finals at this tournament and uh, it would be a, a heck of a game rocking this little town of Hampton. You know, wouldn't that be something? And one more news and notes in relation to the Western Valley Panthers. A great job defensively as well. Now listen, they have the stellar goaltender, the tournament MVP in net. But the shot blocking, the sticks in the passing lane, and the shooting lane, absolutely phenomenal. Talk about their game and how they played defensively. Well, I mean, you, you, I think you pretty much summed it up right there. Um, it, it's that willingness to get in the shooting lane and take that puck uh, if you're willing to sacrifice your body to stop the puck and, and hold the shots off, then that picks your team up. Like a good fight can, a good block shot is almost as well. You're willing to sacrifice your legs, your body to get in front of that. Uh, everyone else is going to play better for you. So, before we sign off, uh, congratulations for the Canucks. It was great to have you here. I know there's a lot of you up north who have been listening to our broadcast for the few days that we've been here. 
thanks a lot for listening and tuning in on Bell Alliant. We greatly appreciate that. I know a couple of you, or a few of you, I should say, are having a bit of complications in relation to the internet feed. But hopefully you're able to uh, watch all the games in the convenience of your environment. Now, let's... Yep. I don't mean to interrupt No, go ahead. Um, just if I can interject for one second, uh, I, I just want to congratulate the team from up north. Mm -hmm. um, I talked with their coach about what it's like to put that team together. and You know, it, it's a tiring job having been there to, to, to do the fundraising necessary. And you're talking a lot of money to, for this tournament and a long drive. Uh, and so... Uh, for everybody up there, you know, I want to get a congratulations to the team, but also a congratulations to the fans and those who support the team. Keep it up, and uh, hopefully they can get more sponsors. You know, interesting, The um, it goes to different provinces to provinces who are hosting the event. Uh, Prince Edward Island, uh, here in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia as well. What do you think the chances are of doing a broadcast up north? I, I, that is not my call. I, I uh, It would be hard-pressed, I think, to send... Because there's, you'd have to have a host team, uh, which would be them, and then you'd have to have another team up there, and they don't have a team. Uh, what, what some of the listeners may not understand, who are not familiar with them, their team here does not play together all season. Uh, most of their kids, I mean, the, the young uh, defenseman there, uh, what's uh, his name? Gardner. Gardner. Uh, him and his twin brother, they play midget hockey. They, they're 17 years old. And then uh, the rest of them guys play senior hockey up there, huh. and they are play in different communities of different teams. Mm. And that, you know, and then I had said it's impressive on how they come together. So to have uh, the tournament up there, you would need two teams. Well, they, they don't really have one team, right? So it would be it would be hard for us to see that, but uh, you never know. I, I'd be I'd be up for the flight, that's for sure. It'd be fine. And you know, myself as well. I don't want to give anything away, but uh, believe me. Um, it is a possibility down the road. I'll, I'll just say that. Now, let's talk about our semifinal number two. An intriguing matchup, a team you know very well, the Hampton Hurricanes, and uh, taking on the um, defending champions, the team from Nova Scotia, uh, the Chester Clippers again, 7 o'clock Atlantic time. And what are you anticipating uh, tonight? Well, I can tell you after viewing the last game last night, uh, I would say that we're going to see a lot more intensity than we did last night between from both teams. I think each of them know going into it last night that the, the game that had really no meaning. It was kind of a feeling out game. Sure. Uh, they did, they wanted to keep everyone active, keep everyone in the game. Uh, coach, I, I know the Hampton coach gave players time on the power play and penalty kill that probably normally wouldn't happen. Um, I know that the uh, Chester team shortened their bench a little bit due to, due to some injuries and suspensions. Mm -hmm. So I would hazard a guess that we're going to see uh, probably a little lot more intensity tonight. Um, and, and they're two quality teams, I think. Of the, of the, the Chester team, the, the Clippers, I think they have probably one of the more dominant forwards in the tournament. Um, but I would say that the Hampton team probably plays a little bit better as a team, as a total, as a tournament. So uh, it'll be an interesting show tonight. Well, and that'll wrap it up here in the broadcast booth. And uh, before we uh, end the broadcast, I know I said that twice already, um, are we expecting a sold-out building tonight? know what I hope so it would be nice to have all our fans here I mean it is a Saturday night and it's at a seven o'clock game so we chose this game so our fans could come watch it tonight um, we were here for game seven of the provincial finals and it was pretty jam-packed and for those who haven't been here uh, if you put 800 fans in here she's a little cramped so uh, I would love to see the people hanging from the rafters tonight and, and we'll have to turn the volume up in the music a little bit because the Hampton crowd has a tendency to be a little boisterous well, there it is, folks. Listen, we are highly anticipating our second semifinal game, 7 o'clock Atlantic time. East, uh, we have New Brunswick uh, taking on Nova Scotia, and it should be an absolute beauty. That's the Clippers and the Hurricanes. And uh, we will be live on air, I'd say about 15, 10 minutes before the 7 o'clock hour. We'll have a bit of a pregame conversation and hopefully an interview of a coach or two. We'll see what we can do for you. But again, signing off, Josh LeBlanc with... Anthony, say it in the mic. Anthony and Anthony Walker with me inside the booth in beautiful Hampton, New Brunswick, as uh, we continue providing coverage of the 2013 Maritime Northern Junior C Hockey Championships. So we'll see you at 7 o'clock tonight from all of us here on Bell Alliance saying, talk to you later. And thank you for listening on Bell Alliance.